Good morning everybody and welcome back to 100 Days of Code with me, Lily Code. Today is day 41 and we're going to continue on with building our own custom hook. So, so we've already set up a lot of this here now and Max is just actually showing us two different approaches to use use callback in order to stop in an infinite loop with it when we call our use HTTP hook that we've just defined. So by having this fetch tasks here as a dependency, this can cause and will cause an infinite loop. So we've added in use callback in order to counteract this. So that's what we're going to do. But another thing we could do is rather than passing transform tasks in like that, we could separate out the transform tasks to avoid that happening as well. So we're going to have a look at that now. I need this all to be a bit closer so I can like visually see that this is one, one um, function. So I'm just watching the watching the video, sorry, and making sure that I'm up to scratch here. So So yeah, we used to be passing request config in up here, but in order to stop it being needed to be added as a dependency, we added it into the function method call into as a parameter where we actually are going to use that. So further down below, so then it doesn't need to be passed in as a dependency. It can just be defined and passed in inside this main hook. So it's not a dependency of the hook now. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. So in order to set this up, we used use callback in both the app.js and also in our custom hook itself. So we just used use callback in order to control this infinite loop that we were going to get. So because we added it in both places, this actually was confusing me a little bit. So he's going to give us another approach now where we only have to use it in our hook and we can use a different setup here within when we're actually using the hook or calling the hook that we don't have to use use callback in both the hook and in the component that we are using that hook. So we just have it in the hook now and we're removing it from app.js. And then down here we have transform task. So we're going to get rid of use callback because we don't want to do it like that anymore. So we can get rid of our dependencies and that final array. Yep. So now what we want to do instead is pass transform tasks, this constant that we've defined, into our fetch tasks in here. So we can pass it in here as a parameter instead. So we'll just do a comma and pass in transform tasks. And then we're going to remove it from the actual hook call because we're passing it in when we're fetching those tasks instead. Mm -hmm. And then we have our fetch tasks, yep, which is being passed in this object and transform tasks and is dependent on fetch tasks. So, okay, because this is our dependencies array down here. Okay, and then when we're actually creating this transform tasks, this should be done further down. So, okay. So I need a, 
let's just copy this down first of all so this should be now being created down below so i'll also get rid of this space it's just all oh, two spaces out for me so then within our use effect here this is where we want to create that constant because this is where we're going to be using it now and then we can just pass that straight in when we're fetching our tasks so great so we have our transform tasks which is taking this tasks object this should be the other side yeah and then we do want to set our tasks to our loaded tasks so cool okay So I'll save that. Okay, so now what we want to do as well is within our custom hook, we are not expecting apply data to come in here as a parameter. We don't need it to come in here anymore as a parameter because we have changed the configuration of this hook. So what we want to do instead is when we're sending the request, then we want to pass in use data. So we're going to instead pass it in when we're sending this request and it's one of, so we have request config and apply data being passed in to this asynchronous call down below. And then as a result of that, we are not dependent on apply data for our overall function. So if I go to this bracket here, this is ending up here. So we don't need down there okay well we don't need apply data as a dependency anymore so I'll take that out Yeah, so the reason we don't need any more any dependencies now is because the things that we're passing in are within these wrapped functions whereas we're not passing it in from outside so it's okay the way it is okay i don't know still figuring this out myself guys the hooks are confusing me a little bit but we'll get there we'll get there so I'm just relaying what Max is saying, but it still hasn't clicked for me yet. It clicked yesterday when we made our basic hook, but trying to, he's moved a lot of things around in this one a little bit and I'm confused. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I'm just like, we'll get there, we'll get there. Just keep going. Oh, he just said I'm fully aware of the fact that this can be confusing. So that was um a nice little thing to hear because I was like, oh, I just said I was confused. So oh so let's add that task. And yeah, my request is to my back end is not working either. So I just get a 404. So let's open up our Firebase and go to our console and go to our Max project. Yeah. And then we want to go to our real time database and just make sure that this is indeed the correct 
URL we've passed it and I'm not sure whether we need to clear this database. I don't know why we would have to do that because surely if we are using this hook and here we're passing through this URL, then when we do the forward slash task.json, should it not just create a new area within our database? But maybe we should just remove the old data in case that isn't somehow like you shouldn't be doing that. So we'll find out now in a moment. So I'll just say, or it could be something else. So we'll find out soon. So post for it's not found. Okay. And let's go to our network tab and just try and see if we can see why it's not found. So let's open this up a bit more and have a look. So, so there's our request payload. This is what I sent. I meant to say hello, but I spelt it incorrectly. So <laughs> that's okay. And then if we just keep having a look, so we just have a 404 not found. We were trying to do a post method to add something to this database. This is the URL of our particular Firebase. Hmm. No, it's not. Does that like shorten it or something? Or where is this one coming from? So let's copy this and just say, because I think we're still passing in an incorrect URL somewhere. So let's just search for this URL. Oh, ah, mm. Okay, okay. Yes. So there are other places where we have not updated this URL yet in this project. So we can see here tasks.json, right? This is the wrong URL actually after I went and checked it. So we can see here that this says react http a number firebase.io.com. And then when I go back to my own one that I've used and that I am trying to use for this particular operation to add post inf data to this backend server that's running on Firebase online for free. Um, we can see that this URL is different, right? So my URL is max complete react default, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's not the same as this particular one that we're getting the error from. So somewhere else we're using an, a URL and I have not updated that URL. So we'll go and figure out what's going on there now in a moment. But there was something else that twigged me on to why this was incorrect. So let's just see if I can see it. Well, we didn't go anywhere else, but just to note as well, this is a 404 not found. So yes, it hasn't found the database. It cannot interact with it. That's what's going on. And that's because this is Max's database. So that's okay. So there was one other place back in my console, was it? Tasks.json. New task. Yeah, this was it here. So it also gave us the file in which we are having this error. So it's in our new task.js on line 14. So we're passing in the wrong URL on line 14 of new task. And that's how you figure these things out and these bugs and stuff. That was straightforward enough. Still, I tried to send something yesterday and I just thought, oh, it didn't work. We'll continue on. You know, I didn't go looking and trying to figure it out. So Sometimes they take a moment to solve either just through sheer negligence like what I did yesterday. Well, I just didn't think I thought maybe it could have been something else. So I continued on. But um, if you get an error like this, that's how you sort of step through it and figure out what it is that's happening. So if we go back now to our app.js where we've passed in the URL that we actually want to use, I'll just copy this and then go to our new tasks and just see how is that interacting with everything, our new tasks. So here we go. We have our new task and on add task, we're running a task add handler, which is here. So, OK, so we need to go and investigate our new tasks. And then when we're fetching, we're also fetching our tasks within our tasks component. So this fetch on fetch fetching the tasks. <laughs> OK, so there is our fetch tasks. Cool. And that is using the correct URL. So our posting method within our new task is not the correct URL. That's what I'm guessing. So yeah, here we go. So this should be our own database URL, 
which makes more sense. Um, and then, so what's happening here is when we add, enter a new task, there's an asynchronous function that's being ran. And what it's taking in is just the task text, which is literally the text from that we've typed into that box. So if we come down, we should see our created task is just has an ID and then the text, which is task.text. And this is coming from our on add task function when we create our task. So it's being passed in with our props up here. Okay, perfect. So we have this asynchronous function, which is taking the text of our task. And then we're coming in and just setting is loaded to true and set error to null to have a nice base state. So when we start off in this function, we are loading something. We've started to do something. So loading is set to true, which further down below, it'll be set back to false when we've completed these actions. And set error is set to null. Just so when we come into this function on a first pass, we're saying we've got no errors. And then if we need to populate the errors, we'll add them in. But we want to start off with a clean slate. So then what we're going to do is try to do this fetch function. So this ends here. No, it doesn't. This ends here. Yes, just so try and then you catch your error. So try is followed by a catch. Um, so you have your try, the thing you want to try. And then if it fails, what do you want to do? You want to catch your error. So what we're going to do is try to send this fetch operation back to our back end, we were passing in the wrong URL. And in here we have passed in specific information. So for the post, unlike the get, you need to give it some information. So you need to give it the method. So we've set the method as post. We've passed in the body, which is just the JSON stringify of the task text, which we've just called text when we're sending it up to the back end. And then we also have our headers which is content type application.json. So this is just sort of standard information that you'd pass when you're doing a post request. And then we're gonna say, if the response is not okay, if we do not get back a decent response from this, if it's not okay, if once we've awaited this answer, if it's not okay, <laughs> How many times can you say that? Um, then we want to throw an error and then this is what's going to update that error. And now we have an error. We have an error logged, do you know? So we'll actually down here. So once we have our set error, this is going to actually update this error state management because the set error is what updates this error. But this is what actually captures that error for us by throwing a new error. We've we have that error object that we can use then, which is just a string saying request failed. So then once we have everything successful, because if it was unsuccessful, it would have come down here. But then once it's okay, it'll come down here. And what we'll get is we'll assign the response, JSONified or transform to a JSON. We'll just await that it does this conversion and we assign that to data. And then from there, we can pull out the information we need. So we have our generated ID, which is just the data.name. And then we have our created task, which is an object containing our ID and our text, which is just the task text as we've seen up above. So great, absolutely super. If we save now, I think we should be in a better place. Um, because I think, so let's just make this actual English and say add text and perfect, look at that, yay. <laughs> So we have our task being added to our database. So if we come down here to our new tasks.json that we've just sent and did it do it twice? No. Okay, so our new tasks.json that we have down here, we can see now that we have a 200 okay status code and the light is green. So that means that was a success. It's successfully added that into our back end. Whereas here, if we compare with an erroneous response, which didn't work, we get a 404 and it could not find that database and it's a red light and everything. So you know that something is wrong. So your network tools are very handy when you're working with APIs and you're sending stuff. So if we come back down to the successful request, we can see 200 okay. We can see down here the text that we sent. So text and hello, which what is what was sent to our back end. And we can also see our correct host, the correct URL where we want to actually send that data to. So absolutely super. Well, here's the whole URL with also the forward slash and our other 
new table created in our database so if we come back to our database now great we did not have to delete movies which i didn't think we should have to but because it wasn't working i wasn't certain why it wasn't working just yet so as i suspected and should not have doubted myself go with your good instinct guys i'm really learning this a lot lately my good is always right and i'm always doing other things well not anymore i tell you that much so if we come in here so do listen to your first instinct it's always right <laughs> so if we come in here now we can see a tasks table and a movies table so it's just added them both in and this is the idea of this particular task and then we can see we have text and hello so super de duper just need to have a little stretch of the hands as well okay so great, we're getting on super. So our database is working and we are adding stuff to it. So that's great. So we'll come back here now into our project and just continue building this out. Okay, great. So one thing Max said was that that was a bit confusing, but that it was important for us to say in a stepwise fashion. So I think I'm going to do this lecture again um, just to really get it into my head and see all the different formulations that you can do. But basically, if we passed these things, these parameters into the hook itself, it means we're dependent on them then. And then that can cause loops which you need to use callback in order to avoid these loops and by passing it in slightly lower in the chain, it's just better. So I do need to revisit this, but for the moment we're going to continue on. I understand it enough, but just the differences in approaches and yeah, that could be clearer. So we'll continue on. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, perfect. So now we've created our custom hook. What we can do is actually use this across the board. I don't know how best that sounds, hopefully grand. We can use this across the board now because it's a custom hook, you know, it's doing a certain operation, which is sending a request for us, which is this seems like a really good example to use because you would need a custom hook like this, I would think, you know, this seems like a really useful hook and I can really see how it can be used, you know, in real life. So here we have our new task.js and we're going to change this instead of doing everything the way we're doing it in here and doing it quite cumbersomely. We're just going to use our custom hook that we've created and that's going to do all of this for us. So when we're doing this, once we enter a task, well, we still need to leave our enter task handler, I imagine, but then, or maybe we don't even need this and we just call our hook, but it's going to replace all of this because basically we're just going to pass in some parameters and all of this will be taken care of. And so will saving it to the database and so will our error handling. So yes, we're going to get rid of all of this and just replace the simple just use this hook instead so we'll see that now in action rather than me waffling trying to explain it so stay hydrated guys too haven't been drinking enough water this week and feel like my brain is sizzling up in my head <laughs> I just really haven't though. I've been drinking enough water. I was on a bit of a coffee man mania one. So we here within our new task, what we're going to do is import this custom hook that we've just made, which is doing these requests for us. So we will import use hook, use HTTP from hooks, use HTTP. Okay, 
So now what we can do is just call use HTTP and we don't need to pass anything into it yet because we got rid of all those things that we needed to pass in in the last one. So we took away the parameters where use passing parameters lower down. So here we have use HTTP and we just call that like so. Yes, and this gives us back an object that we can destructure in order to get the different bits of information we need from it. So we'll just declare this object. So we have const, we'll open and close our curly parentheses, and it's going to be equal to this. And we have is, excuse me, what? Is loading our error, and then our, and I need a space there, and then our send request. Cool. So then our send request, we're going to rename this to send task request, send task request. Just like that. So perfect. Okay. Yep. And now we were first declaring this is loading an error using use state, but we're not doing that anymore. We're using our custom hook for that. So we can get rid of these because we have those taken care of here. And then we can also get rid of our use state because we're not using that in here at the moment anymore either. So we'll just get rid of that as well. Great. Yeah, so what we're going to do now is, so this is actually already making more sense to me now. So in here, there we go, great, okay, this is making more sense. So we have our use HTTP hook, which at the moment we're not passing anything in here, you know, this because we brought it further down, so within the hook, so it's not dependent on those things which can just cause issues with use callback. So when the exact right moment to use the dependencies and not to use them, that bit I'm still unsure of. But in this case, we were better off not using dependencies because it was going to stick us into an infinite loop. Maybe that's the whole time. Let's find out. We keep it on learning. <laughs> oh, God. So um, then what we can see is within here, we're declaring another function. And this function is using callback. And this is expecting the request config and the apply data. Right? So great. So this, once we're in here now, once we have defined, our, we're in our new task here. So once we've defined that we want to use HTTP, now we need to define our send task request and pass it in that information that it's expecting. So that's how we take away the dependencies from the main hook and put them into an inside hook and now send over that data to the inside, to the hook, to the inside function within that hook. So I hope that also makes sense for you guys. But we're going to do it now. So if not, don't worry, it took a moment for it to click with me. And these things just take time and practice. So do not worry. So what we want to do now is define this send task request. And we're going to pass in the data that we need. So what we need is our URL. Do, do, do. URL. And we will just do a colon. Yes, and then we will pass in this URL. So up we go. I really want to get better with Vim as well. Um, I was speaking to some friends about this and Basically, you know, you don't need to use your your mouse at all. You're just such a little whiz kid that you're just jazzing around with your with your keyboard. So that's that's the goal. That has to come soon enough. I would love that. So we have our URL. What else do we need to pass in? I should actually learn it with you guys together and do some videos when I'm a bit up on it. I don't want to be doing these 
all over the shop videos like my video should be more focused for you guys but this is 100 days of code and we're learning together so uh, here we've passed in our url then i've done a comma and then we also need our method to come in here yeah yes so our method is going to be a post method because we're trying to send something up to the server here so this is going to be a post because we are adding a new task and then we also just need our headers mm -hmm. and our headers is going to be this actual It's going to be this actual object so we will just pass in the headers object as well so let's just bring this down because this is getting messy so and i'll just actually move that back so we have our url coming in here we have our method we have our headers which is an object perfect and this should end in here and then we also just need our body yes our body so we'll also add body and we can see here that in the body we are stringifying our body in here but if we go back to our hook we've already done that within our hook so here we have our body and if we have a body if we've got a request config dot body if that's passed in then we want to stringify the body otherwise we'll do null in the case of a get request we need to have a fallback for get so if it's a get we just fall back to these options because we don't need to pass in those things so we can just make it easier when we're trying to use this hook elsewhere but for this particular method a post when we're trying to send something we do need to give it this extra information so that's what we're doing here and the extra information we want seeing as we have already stringified or we're going to stringify it when we actually go into that function and pass this data in so we just want to pass in the task text we've called a text and it's the task text and then once it comes in here it will say okay we do have a request body that's true so we will json stringify that request config dot body and request config is just what we're calling the data that's being sent in to send request and then we're doing this stuff with it so that is this data here that we're passing in, you know. So this will be request config.url, request config.method, request config.headers, and request config.body. So that's what we're doing there. So that's great. I can add in my semicolon. And then we just need to do a second thing. Once we've passed in this data, we want to do some like just access it and do some things with the data so what we want to do is get the generated id and the created task get so the created task that was created give it the properties of id and text and populate them with the generated id that came back from the database and then the task text that we passed in that hasn't changed but we've added this generated id that came back from the database OK, so what we can do in order to pass this, so all of this is going to go. This was the old way we were doing it. So don't worry about this for the moment, but it's good just to say, you know, I'm not going to delete it just yet, basically. So up here above, we want to pass in a second set of arguments to this function. And I think we're going to pass it in here. So when it gets it back, what does it do then? You know, once it gets this data back, so we'll create this as a function so we can just keep it nice and clean, basically. Um, so that's what we'll do. We will create a function called create task. And this is going to be an arrow function. So this is equal to bada bing, bada boom, like so. And in here we want to pass in our data. So we will call it our task data. And then once we have that task data, what we want to do with it is 
the three previous things we were doing before so get our generated id from the data that's coming back from the server from the back end and also then assign these to this object that we're creating our created task and this should not be data it should be task data because task data is what we're actually passing in here so i'll just change that and now it's accessing the correct thing there and you even get a hint because now it's gray you know it's declared but it's never read and then data is probably gonna oh didn't tell us anything about data but that's okay so we copy task data and that it should be da task data dot name that we are that we are getting there so task data 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 who knows so yeah awesome okay wonderful so we actually do just pass this in now as a second parameter to say this is what we want to do afterwards so just like that so that's great okay so so now we're just going to clean up this so now we're just going to clean up this file so we can grab all of this old code and delete it because we do not need it anymore i think we still do need our closing parenthesis let's just make sure no i don't think we do Yep, now we've got no errors. So perfect. So look at the improvement there. You know, we're just sending in much less stuff and it's a bit more organized. You know, it's not as confusing anymore. So we are using our use HTTP custom hook. This is the information that we, the object that we need to pass to this use HTTP custom hook or that we are going to get back, that we are sending to it. Yep. So then what we want to do is create our, so first of all, then we define our send task request because we're expecting this in our use HTTP and in there we pass it the things that that's expecting, which is the URL, the method, the headers and the body. And then we also tell it what to do once we've got that request back and that's running this particular function, which is just assigning that to created tasks, the data we've got back, the ID from the database, so that must mean it was successful, you know, if it came back here. And if not, we have error handling within our use HTTP. So if it did not post successfully, if the response was not OK, we will get an error coming back because that's all handled within our custom hook. And then we just um, add the task. So on add task, we just pass our created task. So on add task. is coming from our props. So on our task, sorry. So yeah, when we add a new task, so in our app.js, okay, we have our on add task, which we're calling our task add handler, which is taking a task and setting the tasks to the previous tasks. So we're just passing it in to all of our tasks here. So great. And we have an error. So we have an error here. So on new task.js, let's just reload this page to be sure, to be sure, to be sure. And we will just go down to our new task.js file. So in our new task.js, 
on line 10, 21 and 27, we have some errors. So I'll just bring this down here so we don't get rid of it and we can see what's going on. So here we go. Line 10, perfect. Line 10, created task. Te task text is not defined. Okay. But here, we've said that the body of our send task request should be the task text. Task text. And then our enter task handler is not defined either on line 27. Aha, uh -huh, yes. So, this should still be, or should we be using something else here? Okay. So literally I just played the video just to see, and Max just goes, so I'm missing the task text. So we'll find out exactly now why, what else we need to do to get this working. Okay, so it's because we're in new task here. We have our create task function. And this should be within an enter task handler. So I got rid of too much stuff anyway, first of all, from our delete, I think. That's the first thing I did wrong. So this should be task data because we still need our enter task handler to be running. That's what we want to run when we do all this stuff. So our enter task handler should be then doing all of this stuff. Yeah. Okay. And then if I indent this, because we still need our handler to, to handle the action basically and then run that code that we've just passed in now. So now I can get rid of all this stuff. I think now, do I have the right amount of curly braces? Mm. Yes, okay. So if I save that and then Yes, then we have our task text being used here and that seems okay, I don't know. Okay, so the way that we did have this before, well, or how Max has it at least, and how we did have it before I start moving things around was this function was not nested. It was outside like this, but then it's telling us that it can't find task text. So one solution to that is to move it within the function down below, because then we have access to the task text because it's being created in this function itself. But in order to avoid keeping on nesting these functions, what we could do instead is to pass the task text into this function. So we could go task text, comma, task data and pass it in. But in our custom hook then, which is calling create task, So this should be passed create task. That function should be being passed in there. Um, 
I thought we had that done. So this is grey and this is because this should be being passed in because this is what we want to happen after we've done the first bit. After we've passed this send task request, then we want this function to run. So if we go back into our use HTTP and have a look at that function, it's only expecting one thing. So the create task. Okay, so here, this is the one we're talking about. So when we're applying the data, it only passes in one thing, just the data. So therefore, okay. So what we could do in order to work around this and to pass two things in here that the second thing that we need our task text we could bind so we do a dot bind which this will bind the property to this particular okay so it allows us to pre-configure any any function object that we have so any function that we have we can pre-configure it by adding dot bind to the end of the function name or function call I should say function mm -hmm. yeah and the first the first thing so normally what I would use bind for is for setting the this keyword when you need to use this somewhere you can bind the thing that you want to pass there and make sure that that particular this is the this that's going to be used when you call that function that you're passing the dot bind on and you tell it what the dot this of that function call is but in this case that's a first parameter that you pass in so we don't need to worry about the dot this so we'll just pass in null for the dot this and then the second argument you pass in to this is the first argument that you passed in to your create task function. So the task text is going to be the second parameter that we pass in. Okay, great. So that did work. Awesome. And now within our, there we go, within our database, we can actually see these post requests working. So great. That's how we use our own custom hook. I'm still not 100%, but definitely learning. So we'll just keep on, keep on learning. <laughs> yeah yeah so now we have this custom hook that's using all this reusable logic but also it's keeping track of these states and each time you call this use http you're getting and it's 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 a new instance of the state so every time you call it it's running all this fresh you know the states aren't interlinked um, if I was to use it in one component or another, they get their own states. So you're managing all that tracking in here, which is very useful and the error handling and everything. So we've taken all that code out of possibly in multiple components and put it into this one component for better use. So that's what the hooks are. So that's great.
just got asked to leave a review and I actually I was going to stop the video and go and do the review but I'll do it after I've finished the 100 days but I always leave reviews if I like things like imagine being someone who's creating something and well now I am it's actually funny <laughs> that's what I'm doing right now but yeah I just always thought like wow this person has put in all this time you know and this is valuable so yeah I always leave reviews if if I feel it's warranted even half the time if I don't if it's really 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 terrible I'll leave a review the odd time I have to be really miffed but if I'm pretty happy I'll always leave a five star review <laughs> why not you know why not that actually reminds me I have a few reviews to leave good ones good ones great ones I'm just listening to the video here he's going through a few slides So we're going to look at handling forms next. Cool. So chapter 16, we're on to a new chapter here now and we're going to go into handling forms. Awesome. And we have some custom hooks in here too. Great. Okay, so before we go ahead to forms and we start going into forms and all that, I'm going to go back and just pick back up where we left off before and I actually might end this video here now um, and just get set up for tomorrow, Um, you know, in my own time because I don't want to be mixing and matching if I've got to 51 minutes and 52 and we are about to change to a completely new topic it's best if I just get this set up myself I think so tomorrow what we're going to come back to is I'm just finding out where it was we left off before we start going off and doing async await stuff so we were on chapter 11 of course yeah we were building our food application so that's really exciting actually we were building our food application i find it so exciting anyway <laughs> we're building our food application and this is just to add items to a shopping cart and to have a menu list of items so it's a meal online meal ordering application and what we have coming next is adding a modal via a react portal so that's great managing the cart and the modal state adding a cart context this is great. I actually wanted to look more into context as well. So this is perfect, perfect timing. Using the context, adding a reducer, working with refs and forward refs and outputting the cart items. So that's all to come. So thank you so much for joining me, Lily Code, on day 41. If you did like the content, please do like and subscribe. It means the world to me. Really hope I'm not freezing like I was yesterday saying all that. And you know what? Today is Saturday, so I'm going to look into this severely um, today and tomorrow and figure out what's going on. You know, if I can save it in a better format, if I can do something because, yeah that's what I'm going to do. So have an absolutely wonderful weekend, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me and peace and love. That's what I'll end on. Thanks very much. Bye.